It's finally time to finish my working LEGO bowling alley. This is episode 5, and we're starting with the ball return output. In a typical bowling alley, the ball goes through an S-curve under two sets of wheels to be lifted out. In this mechanism, the ball goes in one side, and when the tires are spun, it comes out of the other side. And if I flip this vertically, it now goes in the bottom and is outputted at the top. Doubling that would be the whole curve. But I can actually remove two of those panels to make the S-curve a little easier. So now the bowling ball will go in the bottom and engage with that first set of wheels. And then it needs a little assistance here to engage with that second set of wheels. But once it's there, it's able to spin the ball all the way up and out. With the addition of these Technic pieces, they provide the assistance to go from the first set of wheels to the second set of wheels. So after the ball goes up the first one, that Technic piece is going to keep it locked in place so it can't go backwards, while the other one provides a little bit of tension onto the second set of wheels, so it goes all the way up and out. And with all these gears and chains, it just powers the two wheels together at once. So we can connect it onto the stand and give it a try. The bowling ball goes in the bottom back side, and after the wheels rotate, it comes out at the top front side. So, with the S-curve lift now done, it's time to add a chain lift to get the ball all the way up to that curve. The chain lift here has a tensioner on it, so that way the weight of the ball doesn't allow the clips to then rotate down. When a ball is at the base, it can then rotate and bring the ball to the top. Now we can implement this into the machine and give it a test. With the ball launched into there, it then goes down the ramp and all the way to the bottom of the lift. Now the chain can rotate and bring the ball to the top. Next up, we need to attach the ramp that connects the ball from there to the S-curve. This initial ramp is not quite adequate because the ball doesn't roll down with enough force to be able to get under the wheels. But when I increase the slope of it, it then is able to go under the wheels and up and out. But small imperfections in the bowling balls make them slightly different sizes. So some of them immediately just go under the tires. Adding this mechanism here, which occasionally presses on that yellow piece to increase the slope of that ramp, allows this mechanism to work for all the bowling balls. And with the addition of the motor down there, now it's motorized. That touch sensor below there is a button that can be pressed if the sensor does not detect that you bowled. So let's add these pins as a decoration, finish building up the walls, and once those are up, we can add some framework to complete the lane. With the lane fully attached, I can now add the frame for the gutters. But before we fully complete that, let's test the ball return. After waiting a little bit, the ball eventually reaches the top of the lift, goes up the S-curve, and exits the machine. With the ball return working, we can now fix a couple more problems before this machine is done. One of them being that back here on the treads, the pins are still sometimes going vertical versus horizontal into the divots. So let's rip this apart and find a solution. By increasing the angle of the treads, the pins can still be lifted up in the divots, but if they're not in a divot, they fall back down to the bottom. With that solution in place, I can now reclip the treads, attach the guardrails, and put the pin flipper back on. After a couple minutes of adjusting the program, it's time to test it. Like before, pins go up the treads on the right side, and then once they reach the top, are deposited into the new system on the left side. Once a pin goes under those sensors, they stop and then deposit the pin down below. Then that pin is taken to its position in the pin distributor. Once it makes it all the way back, another pin is now able to go into it. Here is a situation where we have pins back to back to back, but it's no issue for the new system. What is an issue is the pin getting stuck here. That's because the pins are two studs and so is that gap. So there's quite a bit of friction there if the pins aren't perfectly round. Here, I can use Technic pieces instead, which are a little thinner than actual blocks. Now it's time to redo the pin table. Currently, it doesn't always pick up all of the pins, especially the front and back ones. This is due to the inaccuracy of the current mechanism. In this example, right now it's clamped onto that front pin, but I can still slide the back pin in, which means it could slide back out. I tried using these rubber elements to provide more tension, and while that idea kinda worked, it wasn't practical for the motor. 
Eventually, I decided on the use of warm gears as they provide a high degree of accuracy. It takes multiple rotations to move it just a little bit. And gearing it down even more, the motor is now able to pick up the pins with much higher precision. With that upgrade, the pin table can now be implemented back into the machine. Now it's time to test it with all 10 pins. While all 10 pins were dropped, they were hit a little bit, and they'll once again hit when it goes back down to pick them up. But the fix we did just do did work because it's able to now pick up all 10 pins and release them. Here is a major part of the issue with why it's hitting the tops of the pins when it goes up and down. It's not directly hovering over where it should be when it's dropping the pins, but adding those blocks on the left adds as a guide so it goes directly up and down. When testing that guide, we can see that none of the pins get hit, and it's still able to pick up all 10 pins at once. Next up, it's time to upgrade the pin sweep, because it's still not that smooth. The Technic pieces in that plate are still getting caught, so the pin sweep is not able to smoothly make it by. While I thought I could just switch out these Technic pieces to improve it, it still had that same issue. So it was time to fully change the geometry of the guide. I was finally able to get the pin sweep working smoothly by using an outer curve and then a wheel on the inside. And after replacing it on the other side so they now match, it's time to test it. Upon testing, we can see that the pin sweep is so much smoother now. With all those fixes done, it's finally time to finish the ball return. I'm starting out with these beams so that way the bowling balls have a spot to land. Once they come out of there, they go on either track, but right now they're falling through. So after finding the proper angle, I can now match it to lock those side ones in place. By rolling a couple bowling balls down the lane, I can start testing. And while it initially worked, it started jamming since that middle bar isn't connected at the end but adding a couple more of those angled pieces allows it to now fully support them. When I started testing again with that center rail, it immediately failed because the bowling ball just went right down and out. But with the addition of a couple more pieces, I was able to test it with all six bowling balls and it works perfectly. With the ball return working, it's now time to finally finish the bowling alley, starting out with these panels and bricks up top and then using some Lego lights to illuminate the lane. With the lane now able to be lit up, the final touches are this trim piece and the button on the front. In my next video, I'll have a full demonstration of the bowling alley with complete frames, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.